Hello, Timberwolves fans. It is time for another episode of Timberwolves Explosion, as it is episode number 11 of Timberwolves Explosion. Today is Thursday, December the 11th, ooh, December the 11th, 2008. We are available on thesportstuff.com and on iTunes. As always, I thank each and every one of you for downloading and listening to Timberwolves Explosion, along with Purple Mafia and Brave the Wild, my other podcasts. Do check out my YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Paladin Joe, youtube.com forward slash Paladin Joe, for sports game reviews, team reviews, Timberwolves, Vikings, Wild Twins, along with entertaining video game reviews, all a bit, not trying to be serious, it's all just for comedy when it comes to the video game reviews, sports is sports, like this, but yeah, anyhow, as I said, we are available on the sportsstuff.com, that is the most important part, and um, it's a great website, lots of different podcasts on there, of course we do have a message boards, or a forum as you like to call it, there is a button in the upper right hand corner that says TSS boards, or you can simply go to the sportspodcasters.com forward slash boards, the sportspodcasters.com forward slash boards. That is how you can sign up to the message boards on the sportstuff.com. A website of membership is growing nicely, and I'm very happy about that. we got to get that to continue to grow and move into a bigger and better things. That is how all of us can have a lot of fun. <laughs> and also, the podcasters section on the sportstuff.com message boards which, of course, is 100% free and 100% fun, the, the whole thing is. Um, podcaster section is where you can vote on the polls I do for each and every one of my shows, especially Timberwolves Explosion, which has the most, the highest response rate on my polls, and I thank you guys out there. You know who you are, who have responded on those. Each and every one of you, thank you very much. You're a great help to this show. Absolutely. Now... Onto the nitty gritty of episode 11. Well, the last show, McCants and Whitman Have to Go, was the title. McCants and Whitman Have to Go. Well, one of them is gone. That's Randy Whitman. If you'd lived in a cave, if you're getting it now, the news now. Randy Whitman fired by the Timberwolves. And uh, Glenn Taylor ordered McHale, said, well, told McHale that if you're going to fire Whitman, you need to be the coach because Glenn Taylor wants. Kevin McHale to be the coach. He likes his vision on the court. And, uh, yeah, uh, Kevin McHale also has given up his VP duties to coach the Timberwolves. To me, that is extremely exciting that he is no longer the vice president of basketball operations. And also, what is the thing you always hear from players about Kevin McHale? That he's very good at offering insight. That they, they teach him a lot of great post moves. Now, not every power forward or center that has come here has become a great player. As uh, on the common man, Dan Cole, on KFAN, they constantly make fun of, <laughs> you know, the list of horse crap centers and power forwards we've had here. But, hey, if a guy sucks, he sucks. You can't really make him that great. But if a guy's good, you can make him better. Um, and uh, it's not always just about the post moves. It's about there's a lot of common sense that he talks. And, uh, yeah, I think Kevin McHale potentially could be in – the right position at this point in time. Well, you know, if he's going to be anything of the Timberwolves, the coach could be the best position for him. I think it probably is at this point, other than some of you might think maybe the janitor or something. But, yeah, we all know that's not going to happen. So, uh, yeah, let's get that thought out of our heads. But with that, we're going to get take a quick break. We have four games to review. We're going to get into the Whitman-McHale deal. We're going to also talk about a trade between the Phoenix Suns, the run-and-gun Phoenix Suns, <laughs> as Dave Eng would say, and uh, the Charlotte Bobcats, a entertaining but not a very winning team over in the Eastern Conference. So uh, we'll get into that right after this announcement. We're going to get into the game reviews. Here on the sportsstuff.com, get on board the Viking ship with Purple Mafia. We will talk about the new Purple People Eaters and the best running back in the NFL, Adrian Peterson. This team is ready to make a move forward. Purple Mafia is available on thesportstuff.com, along with iTunes and Mediafly. 
Simply download and listen to the most honest and passionate Vikings coverage. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion, episode 11, which is a reminder for iPod users. And, um, well, the previous commercial you just heard, Purple Mafia, that is my other podcast for the Minnesota Vikings. Do check it out on the sportstuff.com and iTunes. Hopefully this club can make the playoffs, though I think they're in for, they're really in for it in the Valley of the Sun this week. All right, on Friday, the 5th of December, the Timberwolves head to New Jersey, and they get their butts kicked. Now, this was the beginning, well, if there wasn't a beginning of the end for Randy Whitman, this was the absolute beginning of the end. As the final two games in Randy Whitman's history as a coach for the Timberwolves, the Wolves score 84 points in each game. And, uh, yeah, they give up 113 against New Jersey, 107 against the Clippers. So, first, the Friday, in New Jersey, well, Randy Foy, coming back to his hometown, Newark, New Jersey, with, and he scores 20 points, though he does get five turnovers to go along with his five assists, so yeah, that's not too good. Ten of ten from the line, though. Uh, Randy Foy has been getting to the free throw line more and more and more. I am very pleased with the progress of Randy Foy uh, as the strange uh, Randy Whitman rotations continue here. Kevin Ollie starting at point guard. Foy is shooting guard. Ollie only plays seven minutes, so it's like, what's the point? And Sebastian Telfair plays 41 minutes. Again, what's the point? McCants actually has an okay game. 5 of 10 from the floor, good for 12 points. Not bad at all. Craig Smith, once again, very productive. 5 of 4 from the floor, hitting all four free throws. Dishing out two assists and, of course, closing with 12 points. Got to like that indeed. Uh, Carney plays 13 minutes and misses three shots. Okay, great. Well, he did dish out one assist, but yeah, Ronnie Carney, hmm, I like him a lot. I like his defensive uh, energy and everything, but the guy can't score at all. I don't know what his problem is. Um, yeah, I mean, the talk before was me and Marcus were saying, uh, yeah, it's because he's just getting in the game. He's throwing up wild shots and stuff, but you know, sooner or later, you got to, you know, do something about that. You can't just make excuses for people uh, at the same time. Uh, Kevin Love getting the start in this particular game. Not very good, not very bad. Uh, only shot the ball six times and scored six points and got five rebounds. Now, Kevin Love is probably the best rebounder on this team, as you'll see in the next couple of games here. Uh, yeah, I think he's a better rebounder than L. Jefferson, who's only averaging actually 10 a game this year. So for some odd reason, L. Jefferson's rebound totals have dropped. I don't know if it's because Kevin Love is stealing him from him or what the deal is. Uh, Jefferson did, though, get a 17 and 12. He did get 12 rebounds in this particular game and four blocks. Uh, Jefferson has been racking up the blocks of late. That is also a very good sign. Uh, his defense has improved significantly this year versus last year. He still gives up the lane to players at times that drive into the basket, but, uh, you know, in other times he's shown some signs of improvement. Uh, you you got to give him some credit. He's not perfect. Uh, he's a better defender than Love, that's for sure. Other than that, though, this is just a horrible game. Um, nobody on the Nets really superly stood out, to be honest. Uh, Brooke Lopez, a guy who could have been a Timberwolf with a double-double, 10 or 11 and 10 there. Uh, e. Jin Lin, I guess you could say he stood out. He was 4 of 7 from 3-point range. That was frustrating. Bobby Simmons, 3 of 4 from 3-point range. As the Nets as a whole shoot 50%, they make 14 of 28 threes and shoot 53% from the floor as a whole. Um, okay, bad defense, and also the Nets just were hitting their shot. Devin Harris looks like an absolute star, even though he was only 2 of 7 from the floor, but he did make 11 of 12 from the line. Vince Carter, a plus 32 in this game. Huge. You got to like that if you're a Nets fan. Rusty, congratulations on the victory. Um uh, you know, I probably should have contacted you. We could have probably done some type of show or something. I wish I did now, and I'm sorry. Hopefully you're listening. And, uh, yeah, congratulations on the uh, butt kicking that you got there. So uh, <laughs> that's pretty much about there is about this is to say about this game. Ejin Lin hitting those threes, and that was awfully frustrating to watch. He's not a big fan of that guy at all. I think he's a wuss and uh, a baby. So now we're going to go to Saturday night. 107-84, the Clippers destroy the Timberwolves in the Target Center. The Clippers, folks, 
were 3 and 15 at the time. 3 and 15. And they beat the 4 and 14 Timberwolves. They're even worse than us. They come into our house and kick our butts. Now, when you look at a lineup with Baron Davis, Eric Gordon, who I'm a pretty big fan of, Marcus Camby, Zach Randolph, and Al Thornton, you know, yeah, you could see this team being a, just a little bit better than four and sixteen. I don't know. I really don't understand why they're not why they're doing that poorly, to be honest with you. But at the same time, they are doing that poorly, and you gotta take you gotta do something about it. Take advantage of it. Beat somebody. Uh, Kevin Love returning to the bench, but picks up fifteen rebounds. And gets 13 points. So that was good news. Rodney Carney gets hot for a short stretch with 12 points and three steals. Um, yeah, you got to like, I mean, whenever Carney is on his game, it's fun to watch. Telfair racking up five assists in only 16 minutes. That's cool. Uh, Craig Smith, see, here you go again. Craig Smith goes from like 27 minutes down to 10. Come on. You know, that, this is what cost Randy Whitman his job. There's no consistency. The players don't know what to do. Therefore, their effort goes down the toilet because they don't know what to do anymore. You know, they're probably, un, you know, they're pretty much unhappy with how things are going. Uh, Gomes was a lousy two of nine from the floor, though Jefferson scored points in this game. 13 to 22 from the floor as a whole. Not bad at all. Foy erratic at two and 12, but he did make nine of 12 free throws. And got five assists, good for 13 points. So that's basically an average game for Foy. To say the least, that's literally about what he's averaging at this point in time. But uh, as a whole, yeah, Kevin Ollie played 24 minutes and got two points and three assists. What, what's the point of that? What, 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 what was the point of that? Telfair uh, only playing about nine minutes less, and, yeah, not, the, not a great game either. Just not a good game for the guards at all. McCants, lousy as usual. Shot the ball only three times in 17 minutes. Just pretty much lousy. This was a very bad game. And, uh, yeah, the Wolves trailed by 29 at one point in this game. Luckily, they were able to squeak into 23. They only lost by 23. Ooh. But, yeah, um, Camby picking up 19 rebounds. Davis with 27, 9, and 5. Woo! What a good game for Baron Davis. Thornton, a guy who could possibly be a Timberwolf instead of Corey Brewer. Not the greatest game ever, but... Mm. Uh, Zach Randolph finally playing on the Clippers, getting 21 points, 9 rebounds, so not bad at all. Uh, Camby did block 7 shots in this game. I should note that. That's insane. Uh, just everybody knew. I mean, everybody knew this had to be Randy Whitman's last game. It had to be. The rumors were going around for about a week, and the rumors really, really heated up after this game that, uh, yeah, it was down to McHale making a decision on – you know, would he coach the team? That's the West when women would be fired is if McHale agreed to coach the Timberwolves. And finally, two days later, the deed is done. Um, I believe it was Monday. And, yes, I am correct, Monday. I apologize. <laughs> Monday, the announcement is made, and the press conference, Glenn Taylor and uh, Kevin McHale, announced the firing of Randy Whitman and that Kevin McHale will now relinquish his VP duties and become the head coach of the Timberwolves. Um, the biggest thing to note, Kevin McHale was 19-12 and 12 as the Timberwolves coach when he took over for, for Flip Saunders back in 2005, the spring of 2005. Uh, the Timberwolves were under 500 that year when McHale took over, and as I said, 19-12. and 12. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not great, but not bad. Um, juggled the lineup a little bit. Anthony Carter was the starting point guard of the Wolves at the time. You know, the Denver Nuggets point guard, solid point guard off the bench. Yeah, kind of missed him a little teeny bit, believe it or not. But, uh, yeah, Troy Hudson ended up taking over. I remember that being a notable. That wasn't too exciting, to be honest. But uh, whatever. The Wolves did play with more energy, and they played smarter. And that is what happened Tuesday night against the Utah Jazz in the Target Center. Jerry Sloan, on the eve of Jerry Sloan's 20th anniversary, the evening of his 20th anniversary as head coach of the Utah Jazz. Congratulations to Jerry Sloan, who is a legend with no rings, unfortunately. Uh, ran into Michael Jordan a couple times in the late 90s. That's kind of a slight problem. You know, <laughs> when you run into Michael Jordan in the finals, you're screwed. As so was everybody else. Uh, 
But this team played with some serious passion, and uh, they played a lot smarter. Unfortunately, though, they gave up the ghost in the fourth quarter. They were winning by seven points, and they gave it up again. 99-96, to Utah wins on to get Jerry Sloan his victory. Deron Williams dishing out 11 assists and 12 points. Uh, O'Kerr hit the game winner. That was the heartbreaker, the backbreaker that won the game. Uh, Ronnie Brewer putting in 25 points. What a game for him. Um, I should mention Carlos Boozer didn't even play in this game, so that's a problem. But Millsap has filled in fantastic, though, 15-10. and 10. He has just been a really good player for the Utah Jazz in Boozer's absence. And that's why the Jazz are still 14-9. and 9. As I said, 15-10, and 10, also dishing out three assists. Got into foul trouble, though. Uh, Karolenko, nobody really off the bench for... Utah was too exciting, to say the least. Randy Foy, solid game, but not great. 17 points, 4 assists, 4 of 11 from the floor. McCants, an awful 2 of 12. McCants enters the starting lineup, as does Craig Smith. That is the change in Kevin McHale's regime. That is the change. Kevin Love getting another 15 rebounds in this game. to go along with 8 points and 2 steals, so cool. Jefferson, 21-7, and seven, four blocks again for Al Jefferson. But, yeah, notice only seven rebounds. So what's going on there? Is, is it because Kevin Love's taking him away, or what's the real reason? There's got to be something. But, yeah, when Craig Smith started, he had ten points in the first quarter and five to go the rest of the game. Fifteen and five, not bad. Uh, Craig Smith filling up the stats, too, with two steals and two assists to go along with that, was six of eight from the floor. Craig Smith... Should get the ball more, I think. This guy can rack up the points. I mean, it's been proven multiple times in the past. Ryan Gomes, another stat filler, and also shot 50% from the floor. Uh, but, yeah, Randy Foy, though, the, the notable again. Eight free throw attempts, man made them all. So that's good. Randy Foy continuing to get to the line and make his free throws. Uh, Kevin Love. Now, Kevin Love was only two of nine from the floor, and uh, he was really beating himself down about it, and Kevin McHale just kind of took him aside and said, hey, you know, it'll be all right. Just hang in there. You know, we all know Kevin Love and Kevin McHale. There's a, there's a bond there. And uh, I got to think McHale coaching this team is going to help Kevin Love and help the rest of the team. Now, here's another major, major notable in this game that absolutely tells you something right here, the situation with Sebastian Telfair. Now, of course, Kevin Ellie, back to the bench where he belongs, now, of course, Randy Foy played 37 minutes, right? He's the starter, and he should be the starter. He's the best point guard on this team in his emergence of late, averaging about 17 points a game the last 11 games. So, clearly, an improving player in Randy Foy. Kevin Ali, folks, played 26 minutes. Sebastian Telfair, 10, and he only attempted one shot. What does that tell you? When the guy who put this team together... Is playing Kevin Alley 15 minutes longer than Sebastian Telfair. That tells you Telfair is done, folks. He's done. Unless something changes, this guy is out of here, I think, at some point in time. Uh, clearly not working out, and that's too bad because he had a very solid year last year, averaging nine points and four assists. I mean, he was a nice point guard coming off the bench. The f- set problem is when he started, he still averaged nine points and four assists, which is funny, when, even though his minutes went up. Uh, but that's how things stand right now. Carney getting into the game, also a good sign. More playing time for him. Getting two blocks and two steals in 13 and a half minutes to go along with six points, providing some energy. Hit two threes in the game. That's how he got his six points. And uh, Timberwolves high, plus seven from the floor. One of the few guys who were a plus. Uh, got to like that, at least. So there, there was some encouragement here, though. The Wolves played a lot smarter in this game. They also, their defense also significantly better, forcing the Utah Jazz into 21 turnovers. Uh, the Wolves gave up 15, but the Jazz had 21. And this is Jerry Sloan's solid team, you know, with Deron Williams and such. You know, they don't commit that many turnovers usually. So I I like what I see there. I absolutely do. Tons of steals on this team. Uh, sheesh. Foley with two. Gomes with two. Smith with two. Love with two. Carney with two. I mean, wow. That's a lot of steals, guys. 12 steals for the Wolves to the Jazz, 9. Another major encouraging thing at this point in time. 
So we'll get into our final game, which was last night. Now, the Timberwolves played really, really well in the first half of this game, taking a 30-22 to lead after the first quarter and a 56-44 to lead going into halftime. Just awesome. I mean, the Wolves look like they're ready to take over the world at this point in time. Foy hitting his shots. Um, only got to the line twice, though, or only two free throw attempts, so basically got to the line once. That's one slightly disappointing thing. McCant stays in the starting lineup and plays 30 minutes. 3 of 11 from the floor. The shooting slump continues. McHale would not take McCants out of the game, despite the fact he was shooting like crap. Now, there's a good and a bad in this. Uh, the good part is he's, he's, he's showing more patience with the young guys. Now, that's cool and all, but when somebody is playing as poorly as McCants has been playing, I don't know. Don't you got to pull him at some point in time? Don't you? Uh, Jefferson was outstanding, 12 of 19 from the floor, 26 points, 12 rebounds, three blocks, another three blocks for Al Jefferson. Foy was the story of the night for the Wolves, though, 26 points, six assists, and four rebounds. Uh, very, very good player in this game, showing a lot more smarts. Uh, the way he drives to the basket and does that little stop and then off the glass, I, I really like that play because it's, you know, he just gets it done. That's what counts best. He simply puts the ball in the basket. That's just A A plus B equals C. That's all it really is. Just take your time, be smart, and use the glass. Because a lot of pro players don't use the glass. I don't know why, if it's a fanciness thing or what. Gomes got into serious foul trouble. And uh, the story of the game overall, I mean, you know, I said Floyd was the story of the game. Yeah, for the Wolves. Uh, Carmelo Anthony destroyed Ryan Gomes and anybody else on him. Uh, Carney got to him a teeny tiny bit, but the guy still kept drawing fouls and making his free throws. As, uh, Carmelo Anthony went into the half with nine points and, uh, ended the game with 45. Yeah, that's because he scored 33 points in the third quarter. The Denver Nuggets win the third quarter 40 to 22. Now, you thought 30 22 Minnesota in the first quarter was impressive. Yeah, 40 22 Denver. Just depressing. The guy made, I think, 11 shots in a row, or at least it looked like it. Finished with 49 points, 11 rebounds, and four steals. Carmelo Anthony just went insane. I'm not a big Carmelo Anthony fan, but, man, I got to hand it to him for this game. He totally took what looked like a Denver loss and turned it into a, you know, a deciding, decisive win. Billups was solid. Um... Another thing I like what McHale brings to the table, you know, he brings some, you know, like a little more swagger to the table with his team. You know, and it's more fun. I mean, the players are probably going to have a lot more fun playing for McHale than they did with the ultra-serious Randy Whitman. Um, there was a time where uh, Chauncey Billups was fouled beyond the arc by Sebastian Telfair because he sucks. Sebastian Telfair just sucks. And, uh, yeah, Kevin Aldi again getting a little bit more playing time than Telfair. Foy pretty much hogging all the minutes with almost 44, <laughs> you know, because he was playing so well. But anyhow, Telfair fouls Billups, and Billups gets three free throws. Three. And Billups is an outstanding free throw shooter, right around 90-ish, usually, on a yearly basis. Uh, yeah, 90 right there. 90.2 this year. Just a sick free throw shooter. And the first shot, he put it up, it looked like a shack. Just douche. It was the ugliest free throw. <laughs> And then Kevin McHale, I mean, I saw Chauncey Billups smiling, looking over at McHale. Is that, could, you could read McHale's left smiling and kind of chuckling, hey, where'd that one go, Chauncey? Where'd that one go? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's the little things, and I like little things. Sometimes it can just loosen up a team and make them play better and with some more confidence. And this team is doing that. Unfortunately, yeah, the stupid Carmelo Anthony, you know, turned into an NBA jam. He's on fire, you know, he can't miss. I mean, it was NBA jam, folks. Um, I don't think you could blame Kevin McHale for that, that Carmelo Anthony got so hot it was sick. Because these weren't defensive lapses. He was just making his shots. He just was. So you can't really rip on the Wolves' defense as much as you'd like to in this particular game. Um, Kevin Love with 14 rebounds. Again, another Massive rebounding game for Kevin Love. He was pretty solid in this game, to be honest with you. I, I like what I saw. I think he's going to get better under Kevin McHale. Again, we'll see what happens. Smith starts again, 5 of 9 from the floor. He scored, uh, I believe it was 12 points, yeah, in the first quarter. 
and finished with 13. So that's disappointing. Another hot start in the first quarter that just fizzled. Um, can't say I like that too much. But the main thing is the Wolves do play with more confidence, they play smarter, and their defense is significantly better as a whole. That's what I like under Coach McHale. That is the last game I will be able to review at this point in time, being it was the last game available. Uh, my thoughts, though, on Kevin McHale are, well, I'm not too disappointed that he's the coach. I, We'll see. I mean, let's give it a shot. Trying not to be too homeristic. Super quick, though, before uh, we get into the polls and talk a teeny tiny bit more McHale, there was a pretty significant trade in the uh, NBA last night. Raja Bell and Boris Dia shipped to Charlotte, the Charlotte Bobcats. So uh, don't be surprised if Boris Dia's numbers go up, fantasy players. Jason Richardson, who pretty much did nothing in Charlotte. Very, you know, I was a huge disappointment. This team did not get better. They just didn't do anything with him, and he was hurt most of the time. But now he's going to the Phoenix Suns. So the run-and-gun Phoenix Suns get another big-name guy to go along with Steve Nash, Amari Stoudemire, and Shaquille O'Neal, and, and Grant Hill. How could I forget? That's a pretty, you know, pretty glitzy lineup. So we'll see what happens. Um, Jason Richardson went from 21 points a game to 18.7. So uh, this guy clearly, though, a scorer in his career, about a 20 points a game type of guy who can rebound get his, and, and get assists and is a okay defender. Uh, it, it should be interesting. It's going to be a very expensive lineup over there in Phoenix. Uh, they need to make their run now because Nash and Shaq are not young. So, uh, fortunately, Richardson's kind of a, you know, middle youngish type of guy, but so was Dia. Dia wasn't producing much. Bell was a very valuable guy. Uh, Steve Nash, not too happy at all. He, his comment is he's emotionally drained that Roger Bell is gone. They're pretty much best friends and chemistry was fantastic. Uh, along with a great three-point shooter and defensive player. So that's one thing that the Suns will miss. So we'll see what Jason Richardson will do. Can he stay healthy? Will he make this team better with the Terry Porter system? We shall see indeed. But with that, we're going to take another quick little teeny tiny break, and we'll be back with the polls right after this. Here on the sportstuff.com, we're toughing up on Brave the Wild with Paladino. Join me, Paladino, as we brave the Minnesota Wild Hockey Club on our way to the playoffs. We're available on the sportstuff.com and iTunes. The boogeyman, Derek Bugard, says you better listen or he just might drop the gloves. Call up your courage and brave the wild with your buddy, Paladino Joey. And we are back for our final segment on Timberwolves Explosion, episode number 11. It is time to talk about the polls. Now, the previous bit you just heard, Brave the Wild, and my Minnesota Wild podcast. Do check it out. Also available iTunes and TSS, thesportstuff.com. Now, the polls for last week's show, which drastic move should the Wolves do first? Except, unfortunately, this thing is pretty much done. Though 75% of you got your way. 75 to 25, Whitman beats out McCants. Nobody says trade Foy before his stock drops. Quite frankly, I'm glad. You know, I just thought I'd put that up there because I think some people out there could be down on Foy, and God knows I was. But the truth is, as you could probably hear in my voice of late, I want Randy Foy to succeed so badly. It's not even funny because it will make this team so much better to have a dynamic point guard. I mean, I've basically been putting that message out forever. And uh, Foy's quietly, quietly becoming that. We shall see. A quick comments, though. Um, Andrew Gotsman puts D, get rid of any associations with Kevin McHale. My response to that is, well, the reason why I didn't put McHale is because Glenn Taylor refuses to put his foot down on him. Best overall choice, though, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, he's no longer the VP. He Maybe he's in the best spot possible for him. Uh, Andrew, we'll see what happens. I'm sure you want him out of there. I don't blame you. We'll see, though. Maybe, he, maybe he's a good coach. I don't know. 
Uh, Red Sten says, get rid of Whitman. Sure, the players aren't great, but the coach hasn't got all the talent mixing. They need a coach like Avery Johnson in there. Foy isn't a great playmaker and would be more suited to play under a guy like Avery, who does a lot of play calling. Also, he's a coach who can get his team to play some defense. And Red Sten, once again, got to hand it to you. That is some su- sweet basketball insight right there. Uh, yeah, I would love to have a coach that can help Randy Foy be a better point guard. Uh, for a while, yeah, it'd be like an Avery Johnson or a Flip Saunders. Flip Saunders really helped Stefan Marbury and Chauncey Billups develop their game. Remember, I associated Billups a bit with Foy, a late starter who was looking like a bust, ended up being a superstar later on in his career elsewhere, of course. But, yeah, there you go. Uh, Puppet Master, uh, his comment, he's agreeing with Andrew Gotsman, saying, I completely agree. He just doesn't have the touch of a Joe Dumars to make a great or even halfway decent team. No, he doesn't as a GM or a VP. I mean, no, he doesn't. Absolutely. I agree there. No doubt about it. Puppet Master is the host of Motown Madness for the Detroit Pistons. Just thought I'd mention that. Rusty, the host of the crossover, host with PMAC, of course. Um, he also is going to talk about what Puppet Master just said. He says very few do. Uh, he said that Puppet Master, or Puppet Master said that Mikhail doesn't have the touch of a Joe Dumars. Uh-oh, I have a comment to that one. But, yeah. Rusty says, very few do. I don't think Mikhail is a touch of an Isaiah Thomas, who concocted an amazingly talented team, even if it was probably the most dysfunctional in NBA history. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, my comment real quick to Puppet Master is, don't forget, Dumars passed on Dwayne Wade and Carmelo Anthony for Darko Milicic. Nobody's perfect, not even him. And then I say, yeah, Mikhail's the worst in the league, and yeah. That's the deal. My comment also is McCants needs to go first and Whitman five minutes later. Maz fans says Avery Johnson would not want to take and rebuild a crappy Minnesota team. Well, you know. It's like uh, my comment, probably not, but no one knows. Uh, see if there's anything else here. Dave Vang chiming in, host of the Run and Gun Suns. Good call with the D option. I'd love to. I mean, I'd have to say firing Whitman would make the most sense, though at this stage it won't happen. Well, it did in the end. What's even more likely to not happen is the trading of Randy Foy or McCants. You can't give up on those guys. Well, at least not yet. I agree on Foy. I think McCants, it's time to go. I think it's time to go. And then there's a little bit of conversation going on. I don't want to go on for too much longer. So we'll leave it at that. Just kind of a lot of conversation there. Uh, real quick, we'll get on to the next poll. And that is... What will McHale accomplish as coach? There are five choices. One is finally, he, he's finally in his element, will establish himself. Two, could be very good, just got to wait and see. Three, better than Whitman, but not by much. Four, he'll lose interest and want back in the VP role. Five, he'll fail miserably and be out of the organization by the end of the year. Uh, my quick vote would be, he could be very good, just got to wait and see. Now, you know, again, I am not a homer, and I am not a Kevin McHale apologist, but I like what I see from Kevin McHale as coach thus far, and I liked what I saw back in 2005. I'm sorry, but I, I like what I saw. So we'll wait and see. That's my stance at this point in time. You can already see some votes going to he'll fail miserably and be out of the organization at the end of the year. I don't blame anybody for saying that, but we'll see. With that, we're going to call it a show. Thank you again for listening. It's been a pleasure. Definitely had to get this show up there with the news. And we'll talk to you again next week. And we'll see. Will McHale win a game anytime soon? <laughs> we'll talk to you then. <laughs>